So law, law was one of the choices, mm-hmm. but it wasn't choice. Well, it was like that option. Yes, yeah, it was one of the choices. But Marine it biology <laughs> here. Then what else? Then uh, I think <laughs> there was something... T- I can't remember. Journalism, no? No, no okay, journalism. Okay. Writing. Oh, writing. Writing was just right. Was there like an option for writing? That could have, that could have been journalism. Oh, I see. But then oh. at that particular point, there was a lot of stereotype and mm. a little bit stilly. It's like, mm. you want to be a journalist? I, mm. don't, ch- don't send your child for journalism. That so is for this. both gender or just ladies? Just ladies mostly. Oh. Just ladies yeah. mostly. If they so want a was, story, yeah. <laughs> they have to become the story. <laughs> they have to become the story. So yes. there's a lot of stereotype then, yeah. uh-huh. much more than it is today. Yeah. Uh, but I remember those law, mm. but then it wasn't the first, first choice. Yeah. So then, uh, but luckily my, my, my parents stuck to it, mm. stuck with it. Mm-hmm. And I, the next year mm-hmm. I joined law school mm-hmm. in Moy University. I see. That yeah. is Eldoret. That is Eldoret. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my first, more or less like my first time mm. out of. Kisumu. Mm. Yeah, born, bred, everything. Yeah. Kisumu and Nyanza. Mm. So, my first time in Eldoret. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And the first year was hazy. Mm-hmm. I think the first year was really mm. Um, I balanced my life a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Then you met those who don't, <laughs> who don't balance. <laughs> I balanced well. I think that, uh, and then that was the first time for me. I was all alone and mm, I was away, mm, and you, know, you, you have you 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 have the, that independence, freedom. Mm. Yeah, the independence and the freedom, mm. and so the first the first year, I think it was just familiarizing myself with life, mm-hmm. if I'd say, yeah, as 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 a young adult, mm. yeah. Mm. But uh, I still enjoyed it. I still got to um, enjoy law as well. Mm-hmm bits of it the others that were still given that it wasn't like a first choice something that I had yeah. I had I felt I needed to acclimatize much more and for longer mm. uh, on 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 certain aspects yeah. but eventually mm. uh, within that within that period the four years yeah it went well I liked um, love the sea there's mm-hmm. something that was called love the sea. that is like, now from second year you become you become no unbalanced yeah and second mm. and second year now mm. I become more unbalanced I find myself. <laughs> there's only one focus here because I understand also a lot. You read a lot. Yes, there's so do. much literature. There's so much research. Yeah, a lot so of much. library visits. Yes, lots of library yeah. visits. And, yeah. and now it depends on how much how much effort you put. Mm. Though I honestly say mm. the first two years in college mm-hmm. are more of life learning. Mm. Life learning. I think for me, mm. I did more of my academic learning mm. not that i wasn't doing it but i felt i immersed myself more in my academic learning mm. idea mm. and 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 my fourth okay yeah so some some of the uh, some of the top uh, subjects or courses i liked law of the sea mm-hmm. i liked uh, constitutional law mm. i like critical thinking i like uh, legal writing mm. you know and uh, those were units <clears throat> yes they were units okay communication as well mm-hmm. and uh, looking back mm-hmm. i feel mm-hmm. that even then perhaps it would have been beneficial to have some guidance on your areas of interest yes yeah yes so that just like we said with uh, the other co-curricular activities mm-hmm. uh, in high school mm-hmm. then you can still do that within 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 academics yeah, yeah yeah so that it is later on when now i started uh, working within the constitutional issues mm. or within the governance and human rights that now i could relate with my interest in constitutional law mm. way back in uh, way back in college okay yeah yeah and even the legal writing mm. i i mean I'm, what is legal writing <laughs> legal writing yeah Just like you 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 wrote in the I mean you mentioned in the the material read out the introduction there's yeah. the legalese of it Oh the legal is is it like the what the prosecutors do while the court is being uh, um, um, what was the name of those guys who write the court the, clerk the, Yeah the clerk what yeah. they do with the when you bring your case now they have to like write the material so that it's palatable to the 
Yes, mm. that's that's that that's part of it. Uh. But then you see our our legal systems mm. and our legal there's the, there's the Latin, there's mm. you know the technical language. You guys are writing Latin. There, there there's a Latin aspect of it. So the more Latin you can sound, <laughs> <laughs> the more intelligent you are in court, right? Well, we are we are a generally learned community. Oh, oh, okay. So then <laughs> <laughs> given to many languages and okay. given to many, mm. you know. So, but the the whole aspect, which is something that is still learned now at the Kenya School of Law, mm. is how you are able to uh, you are able to express yourself, mm-hmm. communicate verbally and or uh, not verbally, but mm. in writing, mm-hmm. in a manner that um, uh, is brief, is concise, mm. and that can be understood for the people you are writing to mm. or the people you are writing for. Mm. Because then, most times you have the way we make fun of doctors. Mm, the way they they can only read yeah. from each other. <laughs> but I think that has each. changed over time. Yeah, that's yeah. changing over now time. Now I can read my doctor's prescription. So <laughs> Before, the more... I, I, yeah. <laughs> but it's true. I think um, even engineers don't write so well. Um, yeah. So it's so. Find, 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 finding a way of simplifying mm. uh, the legalese and the, and, and, and the legal talk where mm. you have someone writing all material and it has therefore therein. Yeah aware of yeah it's like that yeah so those were some of the courses that i really liked mm-hmm. and, it, and 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 looking back um now you start working and then you get that get to mesh you know your mm. interest from before and what you're learning then yeah so i finish high school mm-hmm. i finish uni, college yeah mm. and i graduate mm-hmm. and get to law school mm. yeah Mm. And law school, Kenya School of Law. Yes, mm-hmm. Kenya School of Law. So <laughs> that's one thing I need to ask. So what you do in the, in the college? What is that? Is it like a prep for the Kenya School of Law? <sighs> Because you spend, do you spend two years at Kenya School yeah, of Law? The yeah, Kenya School. And I hear it's really really tough. Yes, it's it's it's. And really there's only tough. one in Kenya. Yes, there's only one in Kenya. Ah. With the, so that so that. Um, uh, the education and the practice and procedures and all that yeah. is um, harmonized. harmonized and standard mm. yeah so mm. that you don't have people graduating mm. ways of uh, yeah of practicing law yes so then uh, yes it's 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 very tough mm. and we were the first lot mm. or rather my lot was the first one to do the two years mm. you know or rather a before year and people half. used to do before it started out at people at people being exempted if okay. you done law school Uh-huh. They were exempted. Then it went to three months, I think, like six months, then nine months. So it just kept. You know, yeah. So you could skip from high school direct to the Kenya School of Law. No high school, uh-huh. uni. Uni. Once, once, once you're done. Uh-huh. Back then, uh-huh. from from uh, from from what I'm told, uh-huh. or from what I hear, uh-huh. back then, if you're done, if you're done, um, you'd graduated a from degree, law school. Yeah. A degree. Mm. Then you exempt, exempt yeah, the, the, So you just instances. just graduate and get yeah. and then you get admitted to the bar. Okay. But then now for our lot, mm-hmm. we were the first lot I think to do the by then ours was 18 months so mm. that you have one year in class mm-hmm. and then six months doing pupilage. Mm. And pupilage now is where you you um study if I could use that word mm. uh under the tutelage mm. of someone who's been in practice much longer. The idea of it is to give you the practical mm. of the practicals of practice. Okay. But then one one of the improvements that were made mm. now that were done now from law school mm. is where you have uh, stimul- simulations mm. yeah mm. where now you have um, oral exams and then so you to prepare you basically how you're going to you pre- how to present yourself. Okay the etiquette how do you address the court mm. you know and then now when you start doing pupilage then you get the practical if you have a good pupil master mm. then this is a person who can nurture you mm-hmm. into being a proper mm, a senior counsel yeah <laughs> <laughs> a proper advocate so to speak you know yeah, yeah. so that you go with this person to court mm-hmm. and you're able to see how he or she addresses the court how mm. do they draft their plans mm. how do, does he or she relate with other lawyers yeah. you know it just tells you what ha- gives you the ropes mm. of uh, practice the legal practice as it is mm-hmm. nice so you you do your pupilage okay okay even before you go to pupilage so you go to Kenya school of law yes 
uh, maybe first year, which is more in class. Yes. So do you meet all these other brilliant of lawyers course. across the country? Of course, yes. And then you realize balance life is no longer <laughs> even balance. You need you need more. You need you more need, than that. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. need you need you need more than that. Mm-hmm. And um, the good thing I think it's also a, it's 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 also, it's also a way of exposure. Mm. You know where mm. you have um, you meet your peers. Yes. But then you realize there's more to life. Mm. There's more to what you're pursuing. Yeah. There are those from Nairobi University, mm. the other other colleges mm. outside the country. Mm, the University so, of Nairobi. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, oh yes. Uh, uh-huh. So then um yeah, you realize Cambridge, you Cambridge know, and everywhere. you know. Yeah. And I hear there are people who actually who go out there uh and and even even Columbia University and when they want to practice here they have to yes, go through the Kenya got, School of Law. Yeah, you've got to go through the Kenya School. So that's different to level get, of knowledge. Yes. Okay. To get that certification for you now to be able to represent mm. uh clients in court mm. because without that then you're a lawyer. Okay. Now Kenya School of Law and being admitted to the bar mm. now gives you or rather makes you now an advocate of life. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's big. It is big. Because you can't actually represent someone if yeah. you're not an advocate of Okay. I see, I see. I, I know in town there are a lot of people drafting, uh, they're called what, affidavits. affidavits. Those yeah. are the ones who decided, okay, <laughs> we want to be pirates. <laughs> Is that the case? They say, they say to each their own. I mean, each, <laughs> each market has its people. Yeah. Each market yeah. has its sub-industry <laughs> someplace. Yeah, yeah. so you, you finished the, the pupillage? No, the pupillage. Your pupillage. Yes. So you finished your pupillage and now you are admitted? Yes, then as you an get admitted the to the bar mm. as an advocate of the bar. Mm-hmm. And then from then, mm. now you can either continue with uh, working where you are or mm. serving where you are. You're already working? I wasn't then. working, but it was paid internship, if I could say that. Or paid okay. That yeah. Hey, there even you don't call these things internship. No, 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 it's no, people. No, no. Okay. Hey, okay, that's now, a new one. It's uh, now for the other courses. <laughs> okay. Oh, internship <laughs> is for the the rest of the unlearned <laughs> fellas. Okay. But yeah, it's uh. it's 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 more like that. Mm. It's more like that. So you can choose mm. to continue serving mm. with the master you had mm. in uh, for whatever number of years. Yeah. Or mm. you can pursue another path and mm. which is what I did. Okay. Yeah. I during my Kenya School of Law and PhD period, mm. I felt um there was a lot of routine mm. for me. There was a lot of routine. I didn't get so much uh diversity of issues. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also knowing myself, I don't do so well with routine. Mm. And so I felt that space uh that space wasn't wasn't mine in terms of uh corporate practice mm. uh, conveyancing you know so the good thing with law so it gives you an opportunity mm-hmm. it's it's as diverse as it comes mm-hmm. you know? and that yeah. is why they say learned learned yeah, yeah i wanted to can, ask like what, how do you decide you know lawyers are the learned friends and the, <laughs> the rest of the uh, people yeah i don't know should you call them unlearned or something no they are what, what, what is the history of learned friend well you see mm. for an engineer knows engineering mm-hmm. a doctor knows medicine mm-hmm. a teacher knows to teach mm-hmm. a driver knows mm-hmm. but if you have a problem mm-hmm. uh or you've been sued or there's an issue mm-hmm. you'll need a lawyer mm-hmm. and a lawyer can represent an engineer mm-hmm. a lawyer can represent a doctor I see. a lawyer can represent anyone mm-hmm. yeah so that requires you to know where you find the law mm-hmm. and know learn the other <laughs> <laughs> learn the other disciplines as diverse. You said you said the lawyer can represent uh, engineers, and yeah. I remember they just concluded uh, IBC versus uh, the opposition. Yeah, uh, the current opposition right now uh, as a mio team, uh, <laughs> and they brought the evidence with oh, with yeah. a canter. <laughs> a canter is like a six a six wheel kind of a rory yeah. type of a car. And uh, at the end of it all, it was just killed hot air and, uh, and wow. you know. So, and, and even by the way, to be honest and to be fair to the to the teams that actually presented the Azimio side, when I was listening to such claims, to be honest, didn't make sense engineer. I, I mean, technically, right? Um, so, and this is pertinent because I, I need to ask this as an interjection. Is it about time that maybe 
you know older uh, or senior council gave way to the more maybe younger um lawyers or advocates because the technology changes every day and sometimes you might assume such you know the the the, the substance of how it works and then even when you present sometimes it doesn't make sense uh what was your take because even here we are talking about the age gap right yeah. do you think Arch. we had more older guys actually representing well there's i there are two aspects to it mm-hmm. there's one mm. the first being and there's a difference mm. there's the content of the case yeah and there's the capacity of the capacity of the advocate or the lawyer mm. uh, presenting it mm-hmm. So I think those are two those, those are two different aspects mm. because sometimes a case can be what it is yeah mm. evidence can be what it is mm. that does not make you a bad lawyer yes. or an old lawyer yes. or a young lawyer mm. the case is just just what it is mm. it's either good mm. and it's presented by an uh, an older advocate that does well mm. it's either terrible the evidence does not add up or match up and it's pre- and it's presented by a young person so those are yes. two distinct things there's the case uh-huh. for what it is uh-huh. and then there's the competence and the capacity of the advocate and of, of which I, i believe by the time one is a, sen- uh, a senior counsel mm. i think they have uh, years and what years it takes, what yeah. it takes mm. to 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 have that name and what it takes to appear mm. before the court as a senior counsel. yeah you have explained it so well but i still have some more question around mm-hmm. this uh is it about the experience is it about the no because now you say there is content and there is uh, you know the the capacity of the represent or is this that, that even if I'm a lawyer because I hear if the lawyer loses the lawyer wins they still get paid yeah so either way you know they they did their their part and maybe they formed jury 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah so they 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 contribute in one or the other so nevertheless they're okay yes it's mm. it's it's offering your services as best as you can ah. as best so as a lawyer you could know straight up you're going to lose this but I'll still tell you okay let's go to court no not not exactly mm. not i, I <laughs> that, that, those are some of the reasons why we are demonized on 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 this <laughs> on the streets yeah. but yeah. um I'd, i'd i'd say again you're required to represent your uh, your client mm-hmm. to the best of your ability mm-hmm. as best as you can present all the evidence required yeah. uh, prepare your clients in the event that they're going to be uh, they're going to be cross examined mm. you know uh, ensure that uh, the advocates on the other side of, of side of case are mm. also well prepared you prepared all your documentation yeah. and I don't see how different it is mm. really from the other from the other sensitive professions yeah. Yeah. including like medicine yeah. you know or, yeah. or 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 with doctors yeah. because at, um you wouldn't take a patient to hospital mm. and, and then the doctor just says i i can't one. touch you yeah. and i can't treat you because you are mm. going to die yes. like five <laughs> they are still <laughs> but at some point they tell you and yeah you, you know We have tried, you yeah, know. Yeah, we have and, tried our best. Yeah. yeah. We, and it's and it's the same way with the with the legal practice I believe. Mm. Where you've seen the case, you've presented all the evidence mm. and yeah, you leave it to the judges to decide. And yeah. then now the judges after reading the after seeing all uh, receiving all the evidence going through it, mm. they, it's at their discretion. Mm. They make a decision based on the law yeah. and they say based on the evidence given mm. and given the law mm. that have uh, that that uh, that have looked into mm. this is the decision yes now i have to ask this now that we're talking about lawyers because i think if we proceed i may not be able to ask it the right way yeah. so the reason even we're telling african stories is because we believe uh, there are two major problems in africa one is corruption the other one is poverty and one leads to the other right so do you think uh, lawyers are corrupt or do you believe or have you seen these first stand as a lawyer or as an advocate of the court I don't think corruption is profession based. Mm. It's practiced by people. Mm. So anyone can be corrupt mm. and anyone can choose to uphold integrity. Mm. There are two sides to it. Mm. So if you are um 
lawyer in mm. this instance mm. and integrity is not one of your values so you will be corrupt then you will be corrupt okay if you are an aerospace engineer mm. and integrity is one of your values mm. then mm. you're going to choose to be <laughs> <laughs> you're going to choose to uphold the rule of law yeah. and not take bribes or yeah. take bribes yeah. to Yeah, to get yeah. services. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. Uh but you've just sounded <laughs> sounded, <right. laughs> sounded like a learned friend there. <laughs> but <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> so, um and and what do you think we can do to maybe, you know, manage this corrupt because I want you to put yourself in a in a certain shoe that I have a legit maybe uh injustice has been done to me and it's legit but because i can't afford a, a, a lawyer that means I, i can pay a lot of money or or they want you know uh they they are not well connected to get my case through the right process and and by the this i don't know if you have ever heard of this most of the people who are jailed are innocent people criminals are out here you have heard of that several yeah. times right how can we do it so that at least people can ha- can restore the confidence in in justice systems in in law in judiciary you know in the whole process because i think that's a very key pillar in aspect of all sides of economy and even our children and our children children if they can't believe there is justice being done right now you ask someone when they are wrong they don't want to go to report it because at the end of the day what happens Besides the police, they want some bribes or they want fuel for the car. Then you go to maybe a lawyer. You can't afford a lawyer. Or maybe if you can afford a lawyer, they don't have enough connection or they don't have the money maybe to bribe for you to get uh, to be heard even faster. Right? You go to the judiciary. If you don't have enough money, you spend five years waiting for your case to be heard. So you find the whole process itself is corrupt. Even before even your case is heard, it's, maybe it's too late if you think about it. So from your experience do you think something could be done systematically so that at least we manage because I know sometimes saying eradicating corruption is just a true lie. Yeah. Not that not that we can't mm. we can't eradicate but I agree with you there are certain steps that we can uh, there are certain steps that we can take to address the issue of corruption and to strengthen and to strengthen our institutions. Mm-hmm. But to answer your question because it seems very it seems very loaded mm. and it has a number of facets to mm, it mm. first is uh, the interconnectedness between yes. institutions yes because take for instance the corruption cases mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. where one one of the things that the public complains about mm. and they say that perhaps the judiciary and and the lawyers are the worst are the Link, point yeah you know mm. and yet uh by the time a case gets to the judiciary mm. it has passed through various other institutions yes and one thing that has been emphasized especially by those within the legal the legal fraternity and even within the judiciary yeah is that a judge mm-hmm. or the courts works with the evidence presented to it mm. and the judges mm-hmm. do not go out to investigate True. and compile evidence Yes. So then it starts right from um, the investigative offices mm-hmm. or the investigative agencies, then you have uh, the arresting agencies, mm-hmm. you have you know it's 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 a whole chain. Yes. So by the time a case is presented to the judiciary on corruption mm-hmm. and then there isn't enough evidence that was con- collected at the investigatory uh, period, mm-hmm. then there's very little that a judge can do. True. Because on the other hand, we also we also have to we also have to stay true to the, to the rule of law yeah. and to the rights of the accused as well yeah. like we always say that someone is you are considered by law mm. you are considered innocent yeah. until proven guilty. until proven guilty mm. and our laws and even our constitution mm. has the rights of accused person mm-hmm. you need the right to be heard the right for what evidence is being presented to you. Yeah. and so it's evidence it is this evidence that the judiciary is going to focus on yeah. so if the evidence that comes to the judiciary mm-hmm. is not enough to convict mm-hmm. um uh, an individual accused of corruption mm-hmm. then we are going to continue seeing uh the kind of cases and uh, uh, what's the word i'm looking for unhappiness mm-hmm. that could use that one with mm-hmm. the way corruption is dealt with at mm-hmm. the institutional yeah. institution 
Yeah. So to address that, then it requires more synergy. Mm-hmm. It requires more uh, collaboration mm-hmm. between uh, all these uh, anti-corruption mm-hmm. institutions, yeah. right from investigations to prosecutions to um, judicial to now uh, the prisons department. If yeah. one, if one, is there. yeah. But then now to address the. Uh, beyond the institutional aspects, now mm. to address the because I think it's a culture issue mm-hmm. to address the culture of corruption within and amongst mm. us, mm. then that goes back to our value system. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What kind of um, what kind of messaging mm-hmm. do we have, say, for the younger generation matters mm. on matters corruption? Yes. To begin with. Yes. You know? Yeah. Is it do we is it something we have accepted? Yeah. As though and normalized. And, and normalized mm. as though it is it, it 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 is a way of life. Because mm. there are instances where you can know your rights. You mm. find someone who's going to take for instance, you're on the road. And mm. I think this would be a better example. Mm. You know very well your road is your your car is not roadworthy. Mm. And you have not perhaps renewed your driving license. Mm. But then you're on the road. Yeah. And you know very well at some particular point you're going to eat a cop. Mm. But then you're very willing to go against the law mm. and give a bribe and offer a bribe. Mm. But then you do not see that as corruption from your end. Mm. What is demonized is the police officer mm. taking the corruption. Mm. Yeah? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, but, it's, but it's true. Uh, it's true. So I mean, you have said too many important points here uh, that I think I should reiterate. So one is that we need to uh, have in, address it intentionally from the young age that, you know, this is the way actually understand the law, right? Because to be honest with you, there are young guys who ask themselves, why should I read the constitution? And yeah. by the way, they, it's a legit question to ask because number one, wh- wh- why? Right? Number one, it will not get me employment if I'm looking for employment. Uh, it will not add any value in my life. But if they understand that understanding the law actually empowers you to understand when you're wrong and when you're not wrong. And I will give you a case in point. Sometimes cops arrest you with nothing actually that happened. They just profile you like, this, uh, this guy looks good to be harassed. Because anyway, maybe he might bribe us. That's number one. So they need that education to understand from the young age. And I, but I think also corruption is a something else that can be addressed from that young age. And I remember when I was, uh, I think when I completed high school, we spent like two years at home. And I was asking myself pertinent questions because uh, I was so passionate to change. I'm still passionate to change Africa and, you know, starting my own country, Kenya. And one of the things that I wanted to do then, even voluntarily, to go to each school and talk about corruption. And here I am. I still think it's valid because we talk corruption when people are already old. And as they say, it's really hard to shape people who already have grown. Yeah. What do they say about mchanga? Right? If you don't, then it's really hard to like shape their thoughts when they're already adults. Yeah. So now that's very, very valid. And I think, uh, you know, that's something that we can implement if we want. Um, then another point that I think also uh, people consider, I don't know, I, I will speak my mind. So if a cop arrests you, case and point where you are, you, are, you know, traffic uh, offense. So someone makes quick calculations. So I'm not bribing this cop. And they make it actually, I don't know if it's systematic or otherwise. Someone can help us understand. So when you get arrested, number one, there's time, time involved. Number two, if you're taken to court, what happens? Your case is mentioned and there's bail. What do you spend? Money. Because bail is money. Otherwise, you are impeded. You know, there the, are all these processes. Maybe you are taken to jail or your car is impeded there. And you know how they handle people's uh, property, right? Uh, then you, when you do all those calculations, and I think there was this proposal back, I think, in 2010 through 2017, that why can't we have instant fines? Very clear offense very clear fines, and you get receipt for it. Right now, we, actually people settled on the bail. So you can get arrested and get the bail from the cop and proceed and go to case later. But the process is the same. Where your case will be mentioned, get the bail, which you spend money twice, right? 
or you know there is a way they balance that bail so if you look at that process itself it's bias bias towards not to favor who? the offender i'm not saying the offender should be favored but that process could be streamlined yeah. in a way that you find that actually following the law is fruitful following the law is something that i can appreciate right now following the law means trouble more and more trouble for you and more expenses so you find people find the easy way is just to 